Okay, uh, let's talk about rehashing. So we talked about the fact that <clears throat> we have uh, some numbers or some strings or some data of some kind, and we want to store them inside of a table, otherwise known as a hash table. Let's take an example where we're storing integers and putting them in a table. So we have these integers. I'll just make some up here. Here's some numbers. We want to pass them through some hash function. We'll call it hash of n. And what this will do is it will generate a hash code. That hash code that we generate will be an index into an array. And so if we have this array here, maybe this array holds like 10 elements or something like that, then the hash code has to be in a range 0 to 9. So has to be a valid index into this array. We take the data that we want to store. We pass it through the hash function. It tells us what index to store it at. We said that sometimes when we set up these hash functions, or frequently, we end up getting a collision. That is to say, two of these numbers might end up giving us the same index. And we said that we can deal with that one of two ways. We can deal with it with open addressing, and we can deal with it with closed addressing. With closed addressing, what do we do with this table? We put linked lists over here, and so the collisions aren't really an issue. We just add to the linked list. And if we design the table correctly and make the array large, we want to keep the linked list small. It may not be perfectly O of K performance, but it's pretty close to O of K performance, and that works pretty well for us. A simpler scheme, though, is to use open addressing. And we said for open addressing, if we, let's say we put in this number over here, and it shows up over here, and then we put in this next number, and it shows up on the same index here. And so one thing we could do is simply put it in the next location that's free. What did we call that open addressing scheme, Mr. Frenovic? No, clustering is a problem that occurs when we get a traffic jam. Yes, sir? Linear probing. So that was linear probing when we just used the next slot. We said that linear probing can sometimes lead to clustering because we can start getting traffic jams built up in certain areas of the hash table. So then we said an alternative would be something called quadratic probing, where we would attempt to try to move away from this using some other quadratic formula that would basically keep us from having everything clustered in the same area. Now, another topic that I did not discuss, because I didn't realize it was going to show up on your quiz, is there's another technique that we can use besides linear or quadratic probing, and this is known as rehashing. I'm going to talk about rehashing specifically in terms of how to hash from one number to another, because this particular scheme gives us some additional flexibility. What we can do is we can establish two hash functions. One is our regular hash function, and the other function we'll call r of n, which will stand for the rehash function. And so we have some different possibilities here. One possibility is that when we hash a number, pass it through the function, get the index, we store it there. And then the next time we have a number, let's say it gives us the same hash value, what we can do is we can take that number, and instead of passing it through here, we can then pass it through this other function. And that will hopefully give us a different value, and then that will put it over here. So now, this is a rehash, so if we get a collision on this one, we pass the number through that one. Now there are some variations on this that I want to discuss with you. One variation is that when we pass this number through here, and it brings us over here, that's fine. When we pass this 129 through here, and we get a, a collision here, instead of taking the 129 and passing it through here, we could actually take what the output is and pass it through there. That's another way we could do it. And the third possibility that I want to mention is that what we could do is have r of n be h of n. And what that means is that when we get a hash number out here where there's a collision, we could take this number and we can pass it through the same hash function. So we're going to do something called a double hash. And then that will hopefully bring us to a different location. So these are all different possibilities for rehashing.